Now, you probably know that every inch of you is covered in bacteria, and a good throng of the right microbes is essential for our well-being. Indeed, you can't live without them. It's only if the wrong kinds of bacteria start to proliferate that you get problems. But what about beards? Are we surrounding our mouths with giant microbial mats? And if so, could it be doing us harm? OK, it's not me. This furry-faced doppelganger is my identical twin brother, Zand. I've always been slightly suspicious of him and his bearded ilk. His face mat may harbour all kinds of strange bacteria, but the fact is we don't actually know. And being a doctor of infectious diseases, I for one want to get to the truth. So I'm going to have a fertile in some of the furry faces of Camden using one of these. This is a bacterial swab and then we're going to grow out the bacteria on this, a petri dish covered in agar jelly. Let's find some beards. I'd like to find out whether there are more bacteria on beards than on naked skin. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind if I uh, swabbed your beard? What we'll find is a bit of a mystery. Research so far has been contradictory. A study from 2000 showed that bearded faces shed considerably more bacteria than naked skin. But a 2014 survey befriended the beard, showing that they contained less Staphylococcus aureus. That's the bacterium that puts the SA into MRSA, the hospital superbug. So, are beards unhygienic or not? It's four weeks since I took my swabs, and here at University College London, they've been incubated and analysed for bacteria by Dr Adam Roberts. He studied bacteria from the planet's poles to the bottom of the sea. But beards are a new habitat, even to him. So what did you find on the beards? Um, a lot of different bacteria, actually. I mean, these are disgusting. There's many different bacteria on there. Okay. We've got over 100 species. But are there's these also, bacteria? No, those are a couple of moulds, actually. So we don't normally expect moulds no. on skin. There are many different reasons, to be honest, why there could be moulds in a beard. Uh, we didn't go into it. Right, most of them don't bear thinking That's about. Right. <laughs> it may sound disgusting, but of the bacteria that Adam identified, almost all can be found on naked skin. And while we did find one common to our small intestine, it doesn't mean it came from poo, as the headline suggested. For those of us that are involved with beards, we either have beards or we kiss beards or we're involved in the beard community, mm -hmm. should we be worried? Are there health and safety concerns with beards that you have identified about no, beards? No, I don't think so. So we don't have to be anxious about that? There's nothing we've found which is alarming. Nothing alarming. And in fact, Adam has seen something potentially exciting in our samples. When you get a competitive environment, like a beard, where there are many different bacteria, they fight for food resources and space. So they produce things like antibiotics. And you can see here, you've got halos, and that's what we're looking for. The clear halo is a ring of death, created by antibiotic chemicals secreted by the bacteria in the middle, killing everything around them. It's the same thing that Alexander Fleming first noticed when he discovered penicillin. So that's a colony of a beard bug, and around it, it's killed the other bacteria. That's right. This is hugely exciting. Potentially an antibiotic. Yes, and um, potentially we could use it in medicine. Adam still has a lot of research to do before we'll find out whether Trust Me I'm a Doctor has discovered the next penicillin. But it seems that there are no more nasties lurking in beards than on naked skin.